Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with another Learn Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to get in and talk about basic color managed workflows. They are a fantastic time saving tool for you to utilize, especially for dailies workflows, so that you can get in and have Scratch do most of the heavy lifting for you. And all you need to worry about at the very end of the process is what you want to output your final timeline's color space to. All right, so as you can see, we are in Scratch. Now, for color managed workflows, it's a setting that we actually need to set outside of our project. Now, depending on whether the system you're working on is used by other people or whether this is a fresh install, you're gonna to wanna to get in and double check the type of workflow that you are working in so there's no confusion at any step of this process. So what I'm gonna do is just close the project. I'm gonna come into the system settings, make sure that we are in the advanced tab, and I'm simply gonna punch in color. Now, once I do, you'll see that I have one of them highlighted here, which is the one that we want, Disable Color Management. Now, right now it is turned on. I'm going to turn it off or just disable it so that we are working with a color managed workflow. I'm going to say OK. We're going to enter the project. And of course, we do need some footage to work with. Now, we're going to assume that in this lesson, we are working on a dailies workflow. I'm going to come to import footage. I have some footage that I downloaded from the RE website, just some footage shot with an Alexa mini camera. We're going to select that footage. I'm going to come down. I'm going to say open. Scratch will prompt me that this footage does not match the Resolution, frame rate, or the aspect of the timeline. Do I want to update the timeline? No, I do not. I'm going to take this footage, drop them into their slots. You'll see we can see some different rastered clips. I'm just going to remove any of the empty slots we have there at the end. Very nice. And we do know that we are going to need to make some framing adjustments to this footage before we get rolling. Now, we can do this in one of a couple ways. I can get in and adjust framing first. We can take a look at what's going on with the actual footage itself. So let's just deal with framing first because it's something that we're coming fresh off of because we just talked about it a few lessons ago. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to come to the edit module. I'm going to come into our settings and I'm going to come to our guides option to make sure that our crop is turned off. Why do we want to make sure the crop is turned off? So this way, when we step out of settings and we start clicking down our timeline, we can see exactly what's happening with any given frame that we click through. Very nice. Now I'm holding Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and using the mouse wheel to scroll in and out or to zoom in and out of our frame. I'm just going to hold the space bar to pan the window around. And of course, we know that if we want to get in, adjust the framing, I'm going to come to our framing option. I'm going to select All. I'm going to set the Fit Width option. And I know that one of these clips is there we go, is scope aspect ratio. So all I'm gonna do with this clip is I'm just going to reset it back to where it was to no scaling. And we're just gonna scale it up a bit just for the purposes of what we're doing, just so that it matches everything else. Now that we have all of our clips framed the way that we like, I can leave this the way that I want, or I can come back into the guides and simply crop it off. So again, everything looks the same, scrolling across all of the clips, all right? Now the next thing we're going to need to do in a color managed workflow is to get in and tell Scratch the type of footage that we're working with. Now I'm going to come back to the construct module. I'm going to come to the media browser. You remember from a previous lesson I told you the media browser is going to be your absolute best friend. I'm going to come to grade and you'll see that by default Scratch has figured that the color space of this footage is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, which is fine. We know that it's not, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to switch it to be Alexa Wide Gamut. We'll switch its EOTF to be Log C. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, the thumbnail is updating itself in the lower left-hand corner. You'll also notice that from this window as well, we have the ability to get in and add source LUTs from here. Now you'll see that by default it's set as a source LUT. I could add it as a grade LUT, but we're going to talk more about LUTs in their own lesson. Uh, so I don't want to get too deep in here as well. You'll see that we can also export LUTs from here as well. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, okay, now as soon as I do, you're going to notice that something has happened. 
right away, you can see all of this footage now looks quote unquote correct. Now I'm gonna say correct from a standpoint of, it looks a lot more the way that we would expect it to. And if I head over to the edit module, you'll now see that everything is looking a lot better than it did before. So what exactly is going on here? Well, this is how the color managed workflow works. What's important to keep in mind is that nothing has actually changed as far as my footage goes. I haven't added any LUTs. I haven't done any hard conversions from log C to rec 709. What we're now doing is monitoring this in rec 709. Now, how do I know this? You'll notice there's a little button right over here called, appropriately enough, mon, and you'll see it says toggle the display LUT on and off. Now, that's what's important to keep in mind about Scratch. We have all kinds of different LUTs that we can work with. We can work with a technical LUT being a conversion LUT like from uh, log C to rec 709, 709 to XYZ. We can apply a display LUT meaning it's a LUT that we're only using for display purposes, okay? We can also then get in and add creative LUTs as well. So you'll notice that if I turn the monitor parameter off, that this basically switches back to viewing in log C color space, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is just turn that on and I wanna show you where we're actually going to get in and set this LUT. I'm going to come back to our settings and I'm gonna come into our monitor parameter. Now, what you're looking at right now represents the interface monitor, the interface that I happen to be working with. Now, keep in mind, if I had a video card in my system, then let's say hypothetically I was sending out to a, uh, you know, a digital projector in a theater, all right? This is where I could get in and set one color space for what I'm looking at right here and I could get in and set a completely different color space for wherever I happen to be sending this to. So for example, if it was in the digital cinema, that requires an XYZ color space conversion. So we could do that right here so that the footage that goes out to the projector looks the same as the footage as it's seen on my display. All right, now you'll see down here, we have the ability to not only change the interface monitor to be whatever color space we want. You'll see if I was to switch it back to be Alexa log C, it looks the way that it did or the way that it's expected to look. What we also have the ability to do in here as well is that if we're given a LUT from the set, we can actually load that right here as well. And we have the ability to turn on and off the color space right from here. All right, so I'm gonna leave the color space turned on. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to head on over to the render module because we're just gonna assume for argument's sake that all we need to do is just do, basically get in and do a simple dailies output for this footage. Now I'm not gonna get in and add any burn in for the purposes of this lesson because we already talked about how to do that in a previous lesson. What you might think that you're going to be ready to do at this point, I think what I'm going to do just to make my life a little bit easier here, is I'm gonna come back to the construct module and I'm just gonna delete a bunch of clips. So we're only gonna deal with one clip here, just for the purposes of outputting. So what you might think I'm going to do at this point is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna to come to the ProRes encoder, we're gonna send this to the desktop, I'm gonna call this Awesome Dailies awesome daily footage because it's only one clip and what we're going to do is in here in our format settings it's going to be ProRes HQ and I could add audio if the clip happened to have audio and let's make sure this is going to the desktop I'm just going to come to my bookmarks to the desktop and I'm going to select and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this going so let's just render this node of course, we can watch its progress right along the bottom of the actual node itself. Obviously, the longer the clip, the longer it will take. Everything's perfect, we're ready to hide out. I come to my clip and you'll notice that it is back in log C color space. So what is going on here? Well, remember, all we've been doing up until this point is viewing things the way that we wanna view it. Now you might be thinking, oh boy, do I gotta go back now and add LUTs and do this and do that and do the other thing? No, we don't have to do any of that. Assuming that we're happy with this workflow, what we're going to want to do is inside of our node output flow, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to add a color space converter node right here. Now, of course, the question is, what are we actually converting? Well, the input of this node is going to be Alexa wide gamut log C, and the output is going to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Everything's looking very nice, very sharp right about here. Keep in mind, what I might wanna do is get in, do a little bit of color correction to make this look correct, but don't worry, we're gonna to get to all of that a few lessons from now. 
What we're now going to do is we're simply going to head back to the output module. I'm now going to add that ProRes encoder. Let's just come in. We're just going to call this updated output. Okay, you'll see we of course are still going to the wrong place. We're going to come to our desktop. I'm going to say select. With this node selected, of course, I'm going to come down and render that node to the desktop. You'll notice it doesn't take much longer. It actually seemed to output a lot faster. And now if I come to the clip, the clip is now in the correct color space. So we can now crank off these dailies super fast without having to get in and add any additional LUTs to our workflow. We can simply work with the color managed workflow to get these clips output as quickly as possible. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels. And if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.